Hello, this video is for the Tuna Cam Stage 4. The Tuna Cam Stage 4. So let's zoom in on my pretty face real quick. Psych. We want to look at this. So what, we, what we're going to finish is we're going to finish adding this detail. So we're going to use a radius tool path here to add this neat detail. It's kind of hard to see in this video, but we also have neat detail on this um, kind of chamfer. And that is going to be using a full, uh, flow tool path. We need to finish, do a contour finish tool path around the outside of here. We've already finished inside of here, but we need to finish the rest of it. And then we're going to apply a chamfer to around the inside of here. This little step right here around the outside. And again, we're going to have to get a little creative to chamfer this edge right here. So when we're done with this, we should be at this stage. So in real machining, this would be called op one where we machine every single thing from the top and then flip it over and do op two. And I just broke it down in stages so you don't have a, a just a really, really super long video. Break it up into a lot of small, long videos. Okay, let's get to it right now. I'm gonna do 3D flow tool path. So let's find our flow. It is right down here. And for the flow tool path, I'm going to use a 3 8 end mill. I'm gonna go select. I'm gonna to go to, I have it, my tool library, my clay mini mill, and that's tool number two, I'm gonna say select. And I'm gonna go 6,000, 6,000 RPM, and my cutting feed rate, I wanna to reduce to 20 inches a minute. My geometry tab, I'm gonna select this face, and this face, for my heights tab, I'm not going to touch anything on there. For my stock to lead, well, let's do number of step over. So how many times does a tool step over on each face? I'm going to do 20 step over. So that's 20 step overs with a 3 8 end mill on a small surface. It's going to leave me a pretty nice finish just with that. My tangential extension, I'm not going to do any both ways direction. We're going to do smoothing, feed optimization. We're going to leave the defaults. I think we can leave all these defaults and I'm going to say OK. And there we go, we have our roughing. So we have, when we left off here, we have these steps and this flow, this tool, this cool tool path, that it, flat end mill is gonna come down and go boom, 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 and just mow those things down. So that way when my little ball end mill comes in, it doesn't have those awkward steps it's gotta cut through. So that's looking good. Let me just double check on here because we do, there's a lot of things, all right. I'm just making sure that floating distance looks similar how far those tool paths are because it's it's got this big radius right here relatively big for the tool or for the size part we're working on let's do this again so i want to do another flow tool path we're going to go flow but i want to use my eighth inch ball because i'm going to start adding some detail so i'm going to go to my mini mill library and that is tool number seven the eighth inch ball end mill so the bottom of that tool is a ball and we're going to say select we're going to go 6000 rpm up i'm going to bump that up to 6000 we're going to leave the cutting feed rate at 15 inches a minute for geometry i'm going to select my geometry tab and i'm going to go select select and these arrows you can actually change the direction but that's kind of what we're wanting to do right now let's go to heights i am not going to change my heights that all looks good now, number of step overs, how many times the tool actually steps over. We're going to do 30 on this one. And we want it to be fine. And we're using a smaller tool as well. We're going to do a small fragment extension of 0 0.07. That way the tool runs all the way off the part before it returns back on. We're going to leave no stock to leave, so nothing. Smoothing, feed optimization. Nothing on the multi-axis, linking, we're going to leave the defaults and we will say OK. There we go. So now this will put in the fine detail. You could go in there since these faces, it's kind of dependent on that surface area of your step overs. So you could, if you wanted these to look more similar, reduce the number of step overs and break it up to doing this face. And then a second, second flow tool path just for this face. But for our purposes, this will be just fine. Next. We want to add this cool little radial tool path that stems from a center point and goes around the part in a 360 degree um, orientation. Let's go 3D. 
and we're going to do a radial. We're going to leave that eighth inch ball. We're going to leave 6,000 RPM, 6,000 RPM, 15 inches a minute. That's all looking good. Now here for my geometry tab, I'm going to do selection. And I'm just going to select the bottom of my part. For additional offset, I don't believe I'm going to do anything. I do want to select this contact point boundary so my tool goes all the way to the edge. I'm going to select it. We are going to do a model. No, not a model. We're going to do avoid touch surfaces. And I want it to touch this surface. So I turned this one to touch. I selected that face because that's what I want to do it on. And let's see, I might, we'll see if I have to come back. Um, oh, center point. So center point, I need to select that one. That's a big one. So for the center point, I'm going to select the radius of this bottom arc. And that is my center point. So all the tool paths will be referenced off that center point. And let's go to top to height. So we've got to do some editing here. So bottom height, I'm going to say model top. And I'm going to say offset negative 0 0.001. And I think that's it on this page. We're going to go to passes tab. And so for passes tab on angular step, we are going to do two degrees. We want to do an angle of two, 360 degrees. Inner limit, I don't think I did anything. Outer limit, let's stretch that baby to five inches. Stock to leave. We do want to leave a little bit of stock because I want to come through and clean it up. Because if you remember from our face mill pass, I left five thou on there. And so I'm going to be plunging through roughly about four thou. Yeah, four thou if I'm doing the math wrong. So, and if not, it's because I'm tired and I'll just use that as my excuse. We want to do smoothing. Let's see, what, what is fillet actually? Fillet radius. Specify, no, I'm just going to deselect that. We're going to do feed optimization. Going to leave that alone. And I think we should be good to go. I'm going to say okay. Awesome. That's what I'm talking about. So we're going to create another one of these. And the easiest way to do that, because I have almost everything on here that I want to do, but I just got to remove my stock to leave. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to say duplicate. The only thing I'm going to right click on the new one I duplicated. I'm going to say edit. And the only thing I'm going to do is remove stock to leave. So that way I'll go down my finished depth. So it'll really be the top of my model. And I'm going to say, okay, get off of here window. And that is what I'm talking about. Cool. So the next one we're going to do is I believe I'm going to add a contour because if you look real close, we have stock left on here and we need to get rid of that. And let's just cheat off my other one and make sure that's what I did. That is what I did. So let's do that. We're going to go 2D contour. And I'm going to do my 3 8 tool, which is tool number two, which we've already used in this one. I'm going to say select. We're going to leave uh, 3 8 6,000 RPM, 6,000 RPM. We're going to also put it at 20 inches a minute. <clears throat> geometry. I'm going to select the bottom, but you see, I don't want it to attempt to go in here, so I'm going to click again. I'm going to do an open contour, and I believe I got to go through here and select all the stuff I want. And if you select the wrong thing, just click on it again, and it'll deselect it. So I don't want to go in here because I've done a finish on all that. So I want to avoid it. And then I'm going to hit the, after I get everything that I want, I'm going to, oh, sorry, I was just selecting on in here. I'm going to say plus. So I think that's looking good. Hold on, we're not done yet. My heights, 
I'm going to go model bottom, and we're going to shoot 10 thou past the bottom, minus 0.01. For, I'm not going to do anything on passes. I'm Well, excuse me, I'm going to do smoothing. And I don't, we could do feed optimization. We'll go, we're not doing any, we'll just, we'll, we'll say 0.125, but it's only on inner corner. So I think we're going to be okay there. And then horizontal lead in radius. We're going to change this to a, 0.05. I want a nice lead-in radius to be gentle on the part. Um, I don't need a linear lead-in distance. We'll go 0.0. .0. I don't need a vertical lead-in radius. We'll say 0, 0.0. And an entry position, mm, oftentimes I will want to put it in the, in the front of a part so I can see when the tool is coming down. But I'm just going to say okay and see where it lands us. So you see right there, it would be on the back where it'd be very hard to see. So if you're inclined to, you can move it somewhere on the front. I'm just going to leave it and just make sure to save so you're not losing your information in case your computer crashes or internet crashes or Fusion does something funny. And let's just, on my geometry, I'm just going to confirm that I didn't select this little radius. So I did not because I did that when I contoured the inside of there. So i just checking. Okay. So now... We've got our whole outside contoured, so it's really, don't mind me, I'm just cheating off my notes. We're really just going to go and start chamfering. I'm going to go 2D, I'm going to do chamfer. And I, it's already got my quarter inch, 45 degree chamfer, beautiful, 6,000 RPM, 6,000 RPM. I'm going to bump it up to 20 inches a minute, 20, these go to 20, like it. So I'm going to do right now just this top surface. And I'm gonna go heights tab, nothing. Passes tab for my width. I'm gonna do the five thou chamfer. I'm just trying to break the edge. I'm not trying to add new geometry. For my tip offset, I'm just gonna offset 20 thou. If you have a chip tip, you're probably gonna, a chip chamfer tip. You're probably going to want to offset more than that so you don't leave a big old edge or burr on there. For the clearance chamfer, I'm going to leave 25 thou. I always do my smoothing. Feed optimization is not going to be necessary on here. Horizontal lead in radius. I'm going to do 50 thou again. 50 thou is kind of my go to unless it doesn't allow me to use it. We're going to go zero. We're going to go zero on the, these lead-ins, and I'm going to say OK and see what it looks like. So I like that. Cool. So the next thing up is I'm going to come in here, but I'm going to do a slightly smaller chamfer, and I believe I'm going to have to change. Let's do it. Let's try it. So I'm going to go on here. I'm going to right-click and say Duplicate. And I'm going to right click and say edit. I'm going to reduce the feed to 15 in here just because it's going to be a little tight quarter. So I want it to move slower in case I screw up. So 15 inches a minute. Geometry, let's deselect that. We're going to select here. And let's see. I'm going to come to my passes tab. I guess we're going to leave the same chamfer width. But what I want to reduce is, I want to get rid of this, 0, 0.0. My lead-in distance, I'll say 0. 0.025. And I think that's all I'm changing. And I had to do that because I'm, I'm trying to chamfer as much of that as I can. But we're starting to get pretty close to these walls in here. So um, that's looking okay. I'm just kind of nicking it a little bit to break that chamfer off. I'm going to hit save so nothing goofy happens. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chamfer the outside of this thing. So I'm just going to, uh, going to I keep saying that, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say duplicate. So here is another chamfer. So I'm going to, let's make sure I didn't, oh it put it right under it. So let's drag it under that one. They all have, I should have named them so I'm not getting confused here. Let's drag you here. 
All right. So now let's right click and say edit. I don't need to do that one again. I'm gonna clear that out and let's look at this. So I'm at 20 inches a minute, 6,000 RPM. That's all good. And why did I change that? No, I didn't. All right. So this contour up here, I'm gonna left mouse click and I don't want to engrave, I don't wanna chamfer this part right here. So I'm gonna click open contour and I gotta go around the top of this thing and select everything that I want. So this might take a minute. I'm not gonna select that, I'm not gonna select that. Sorry, that is a boring. Almost there. Okay, that's looking good. Then I'm gonna hit the plus sign. So I've selected everything but this top part. Heights, not gonna touch anything. Passes, five thou. We're gonna do, let's do a 40 thou offset. We can offset a little bit. We'll go 40 thou. Chamfer clearance, chamfer tip clearance, we'll leave that. We'll do feed optimization, and if it's under, we'll update it to 0.125. So if it's under 0.25 radius, it will reduce the speed to five inches a minute. And since we're, we've got a lot of room on the outside of the part, we'll leave that at 50,000, say okay. And this yellow is where it slows down. And I think I can uh, deal with that. Yeah, that's looking good. So the last thing we're going to do is a trace because this, if you try to do a chamfer, it does not like it. I'm gonna save my work so I don't lose anything. I'm going to go to, I think it's 2D. I'm gonna go 2D and trace. I have my chamfer tool, I still want that. It's my quarter inch chamfer, 6,000, 6,000. We can leave 20 inches a minute, that's fine. Geometry, I'm going to select on here, left mouse click again, open contour, and this is blue, it's hard to see, but then I'm gonna click on that one, that one, that one, and that one. Heights, I'm not gonna touch anything, passes tab, ooh, chamfer width. I only want a 2,000 chamfer width. Can you guess why? Oh, good answer. Um, since it's not flat, it's actually on an angle, it's going to make that chamfer bigger because there's extra material there. So instead of a 5,000 chamfer, I'm gonna do a 2,000 chamfer. I'm gonna program a 2,000 chamfer. My tip offset, we're gonna do 30,000, which is 0 0.03. We're gonna do smoothing, uh, feed optimization. Why is all that selected now? I might have to go back and edit some stuff. That's looking good. Let's go to my geometry and see what happened. Let's get rid of you. I don't know why that happened. I'm gonna go click. Could have been what I, I've been doing a lot of stuff today. So maybe I just didn't hit the plus sign. So that's what I want. I'm gonna say plus. That is aggravating. Open contour. That one, that one, that one, that one, plus. Um, I must have not been hitting open contour. I don't know what I did wrong. Anyways, you click on it, open contour, then select the lines. Um, I think I just had a brain fart there. Let's make sure nothing else got erased on here. Looking good. Um, so sideways comp, um, I think I need to do left. Because if you don't do this, it's not, it's just going to go straight down. I need to comp it. Um, I think it's to the left, so I'll say OK. And that is correct. And let me look on my other one. Let me cheat real quick. I'm going to say edit, sideways compensation. Yeah, left. And then for fun, let's do the wrong one. So for that one, if I did the wrong compensation, it will bury it on the other side. So if I did right, OK. Well, it didn't do that. It's just starting on the other side. Um, let me 
try to not look too much like a dum dum left uh let's say for this let's click on that arrow and see that should bury it in the wrong side so yeah so you see that buries it on the wrong side the other side it was smart enough to realize hey you don't want to bury it but when i click that arrowhead that's what did me in so anyways i put this on left not center and then i make sure my little arrows on the outside of it okay and there we go this concludes the top operations for tuna catch me in the next videos for the back side so this concludes stage four thank you bye